So how I got into education, um, the catalyst was watching my mom and a group of parents um, go to a, a board meeting in San Diego and just be very adamant about the fact that they didn't have a choice of a quality middle school for their children. Um, the, the middle school that I was supposed to go to was already impacted. It, there was no room and so they, the, the district decided to bus us out to a school in La Jolla, which was a great learning experience for me. Uh, the school was phenomenal, but it was a 45 minute bus ride outside of my community. And so for me, I was witnessing all these changes as a, in, my, in my elementary school, we didn't have the high tech labs, the computers, it was just your basic. And going to the school in La Jolla, I just saw this incredible amount of resources that were afforded to us. And that's where I saw the disparity of, I, I wish I would have stayed in my community and experienced this quality education, not just in facilities, but also in teaching too. And so that's where it started. I never intended to be a school leader, never even thought about teaching, but I always had this sense of justice for a better quality education for my community. And so I think just life happened. In my uh, senior year of college, I got my degree in social work. I didn't see any jobs for school social workers. So I said the best, the next best, best thing is, um, is to become a teacher. And so I taught for five years at a district school I saw the isolation that teachers experience at districts. I didn't have any development as a teacher. I was observed maybe once a year in those five years. And so I went back to school to get my master's. I studied critical pedagogy there and uh, I wanted to apply those approaches and I felt like the best place to do that was at a charter school. And so I got a job with KIPP. I applied those approaches and I had tremendous results. My first year as an English language arts teacher there, my students were, 17% of them were proficient or advanced in English language arts. In that year, um, I actually took them in November because their English language arts teacher quit. So I said, I'll take them. And at, at the end of that year, 45% were proficient or advanced. And I looped with the same group of kids and at the end of the second year with them, 81% were proficient or advanced. And this is a group of English language learners. It was a group of kids that were from the same neighborhood that I grew up in in San Diego. So it was just ideal for me to have witnessed what I was able to do with these type of approaches uh, with the student population that I was serving. And then I got the opportunity to become a leader. And at first I said no for a whole year, <laughs> I didn't want that responsibility. And then I thought, why not? Why not me? Uh, I have the right experience to really connect with the community. I have the, the track record as a great instructor and, and I was able to build great relationships with my staff and so I, I said, okay. And I was a principal there for, an assistant principal for one year and then I went into the principalship for three years. And then I decided to come to ACE to just expand my impact as a leader, not just with teachers, but now with leaders. So I wanted to really develop assistant principals. I wanted to develop uh, my lead teachers to become better coaches. So, and it was all with the, the perspective of developing teachers. That's always been my goal. And um, I think the, the opportunity that this organization gave me to do that was it just it just fit in where I wanted to go.